Hello, Plastic Free July friends. This is Reese, and this is WSL Pure One Ocean. Thanks for joining us for another episode. I hope that this week we find you healthy and safe wherever you are. It's still a pandemic out there, um, so it's still important to keep our distance, wear a mask, and remember that we're all in this together. This week on the show, we have another fun conversation in our series on Plastic Free July. And this week, we're stoked to have two-time big wave world champion surfer Paige Oms on the show. Paige is an incredible leader in the ocean community. She has really strong opinions, and she's not shy about sharing them, and we love her for that. We're proud to call Paige an ambassador for WSL Pure. And uh, you know, a little over a year ago, Paige was really kind enough to join us in New York City to go on CNN to launch the WSL sustainability commitments. And um, yeah, she's just a great voice for all of this. One issue she really cares about is plastic pollution. And she's even started a movement to call attention to it. It's a really fun, creative way to get engaged and to improve your selfie game. So stick around for that conversation. Before we get there, we're really excited to um, share that we have some support this week from our friends at Hydroflask. Um, if you know me, you know I'm never really without one. I always have one so that I can avoid single-use plastic bottles, cans, coffee cups, whatever it is. And I'm already a big fan of the product. So thanks to Hydroflask for the support and for advocating to go plastic free. Finally, if you like the show, uh, we'd really love it if you take a second to drop us a rating and or a review on Apple Podcasts. It really helps the show. It's huge. Please, if you have a second, five stars or four, but we'd prefer five and a review would be really great. All right, all the business items done. Let's get to our chat with Paige Oms. Paige, it's awesome to catch up. Thank you for joining us today on the show. Oh, thanks, Reese. Thanks for having me. Stoked to, to be able to connect. Yeah, of course. Um, you are a two-time world champion, big wave surfer, uh, has an incredible reputation. But beyond that, I kind of always like to let people introduce themselves and say who they are. Like, who are you? Because you're, you're more than just a big wave surfer. Wow, we're just starting it off going deep. <laughs> Real deep. Yeah, come on. You, like, who are you? Who are you really? Um, okay, well, I, I'm i Paige Alms. I grew up on the island of Maui. Um, I was born in Victoria, BC and moved to Maui when I was about nine. So I've lived on islands my entire life. Um I live in Haiku. It's on the North Shore, about five minutes away from Jaws. And uh, that wave in particular has kind of become my my love obsession. And um, it's summertime here. Um, we're in the absolute dead flat lake of the Pacific. Um, but really enjoying to have some quality time here at home. It's This has been the longest stint. Um, that I haven't traveled in years and I'm really enjoying it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of me right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to, I'm going to, as a native East coast, United States, uh, person call out the, the, the Hawaiian calling the Pacific a lake, uh, is like <laughs> offensive. Like you don't know lakes that you don't know true, like long term drought from waves. Like we, we've been through months of drought from real waves. So how dare you on behalf of my friends back on the East coast? No, um, I can appreciate that. Um, but you, you keep yourself busy with a lot of, uh, different activities and, uh, from gardening to, you know, kind of being an environmentalist, you're, you're more than a surfer, I think to at least this community who you know knows you as a peer ambassador into the surfing community writ large. I mean, you're not afraid to use your voice. Um, you've used it in the women's equality and surfing movement. And you thankfully came out last year, uh, to New York city to be on CNN, to help us announce the WSL's commitments on sustainability. So like, that's one thing like I, yeah, you're a big wave surfer, but I, I think of you as like, you no know, Paige is, you know, she uses her voice for good things. And I think that that's just, that's how I would identify you just so you know. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, I do my best. Let's, let's say that. <laughs> well, it's really challenging, right? Like, I mean, as a surfer, um, to hop kind of right into a little bit of what we were talking about before is, you know, as a surfer, you know, it, it requires sponsors to enable you to get around the world and to do your thing. And, you know, you want to try to align that with your values, or at least it seems like you have done so, right? 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's definitely a double-edged sword. And when you say traveling around the world, too, you know, our, I think about how many flights I got on last year and what my carbon footprint was um, to go and spread my message. And I was touring a movie. and um, But that being said, and going back to the sponsors, I mean... That's a tricky one because for years I struggled doing, you know, four or five different jobs at a time to sustain the surfing lifestyle and to sustain what I truly love doing. And so for sure in the beginning it was kind of like any money that I can get from any sponsors is a blessing, you know. Um, but the funny thing is, is the sponsors that I had and have currently, um, it was a very natural attraction to one another because morally our morals aligned um all of my sponsors that i ride for um currently ha are environmentally conscious like i ride for patagonia um all good um all of both of those companies are doing amazing things they're both one percent for the planet um all good makes all reef friendly sunscreens and products um sanook is launching their um that, well, they launched their boot last year, um, the Journey boot um, that's made out of Ulex. Um, Hydro Flask, of course, is my daily. I mean, I'm using their products like three, four times a day <laughs> um, in my everyday life. So it was all like really natural um, relationships. And um, that's definitely something that I take pretty seriously, you know, when I'm asked to market these products in in a way um, I want to be telling a story that is true for me um, and I say that and I really mean it like I don't want to be promoting something that I'm like I don't even use you know yeah. Um, so yeah the the sponsors that I ride for right now are just amazing and I feel like it's a very natural thing to be able to share their message and in turn they share mine and it's a very like easy functioning relationship <laughs> yeah it, it you know um you hit on so many great brands i mean of course i'm like rocking the patagonia as you say and i'm it. drinking I'm like, my hydro like yeah so you've got your hydro <laughs> but like listeners of this podcast or or anyone who's watched knows that like this thing is sitting next to me the whole time because talking on a podcast makes me always get like dry mouth and so then i'm just like pounding water with my hydro so it's like super natural and that's why we're actually stoked like they're they're sponsoring this episode um because they got excited about us doing stuff around plastic free july and about having you on the show and helping promote the message you know that, that you do in your work to you know uh, make the world a better place uh through your trashy selfie project um <laughs> so i definitely want to talk about the trashy selfie project uh because i just i think there i think what's fun about it or i think what's cool about it is that you're making it fun and so maybe you can kind of like give a quick explainer on the trashy selfie project and then we'll get into how that aligns with you know the brands that you align with and and the refill for good campaign from hydro that they've got going right now yeah, for sure. Um, so the Trashy Selfie Project started with my friend Sarah Hauser um, and myself, and we were kind of sitting there one day and just kind of having a chat about um, how we can use our platforms as athletes to encourage people to do better. Um, there's so many avenues that we could have gone down, and you know we wanted to keep it fun and light and not discouraging because I feel like there's kind of that fine balance of like sharing information that is really important for people to see, but without scaring them, you know, because it's pretty scary if you get down to what's actually happening for especially sure. in our oceans. And, and you've you been wanted... around the world a couple of times, so you've seen it. And I've seen it and it's real. And these photos that you see online, they're real. And so we wanted to keep it fun and educational Um and more so, like, to really encourage the youth to take part in it. Um, I feel like there, it's, I mean, it's kind of like a, you know, people are saying it, but it is true. And it's like the, the next generation is, you know, they're dealing with all the shit that we're leaving behind. Um, but they can also help create huge change. I mean, just for, like, a really quick little story in Paia. I used to work at the Paia fish market and, you know, at four o'clock in the afternoon when we were kind of slow, I had these kids come up to me, you know, 14, 15 year old kids come up and say, Hey, why are you using this sort of to go container? And I was so impressed. And so that was so impactful to see 
kids come up and, you know, and speak to us. And I was like, hey, you need to meet with the manager. These aren't decisions that I make. But I'm like, you come back at these hours. Here are their personal phone numbers. You come and talk to them. And those same kids from the Maui Julio Foundation talked to all restaurant owners and all of Paia got rid of their plastic straws. Like that was one huge thing that there's no plastic straws in our little town. And I mean, there's a lot of restaurants there, so it was pretty cool. Um, so I believe that the kids are who can actually create change and having a, like a little kid come up to someone to that has been using plastic their entire life and say, hey, we need to change this. I feel like it's it's really impactful. And um, so our Trashy Selfie Project is, it's for everyone, but it's really encouraging um, the youth to kind of get behind doing their part. And basically it's picking up trash when you see it, wherever you are, if you're on the beach, if you're in the ocean, if you are going for a hike or if you're walking on the street and you pick up a piece of trash, you take a photo with it, and you post it on social media um, with the hashtag trashy selfie with the recycle emoji at the end, um, which we added just so that it could be something different um, than trashy selfie, because that gets a little funny if you look at that hashtag. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You meant it for the kids and then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. The Internet ruins everything. Yeah. But um, yeah, selfie. So it's like you can take a photo with your trash or you can do it as a group. You can see these photos here on the screen show a lot of different groups and friends. <laughs> um, this is Sarah and I just kind of making fun of the whole situation. But um, yeah, I, and it's like a really cool way to incorporate our sponsors into it, too. Sarah's a professional windsurfer, amazing athlete. Um, and so our values are very similar, you know, living here on Maui and and wanting to see our beaches clean uh, for the next generation. So, yeah, we started this off and we get our sponsors involved to do challenges every month. And, and yeah, it's it's grown and it's also something that's there. We're kind of figuring out what are our next steps, you know, host, hosting challenges and um, and kind of being on on this like social media movement and being a part of that yeah. is one thing, but we're just trying to figure out right now, actually like where we're headed. Um, and well, you know, we, we had for the first in this series, we had, um, Rebecca Prince Ruiz, who's the founder of plaster free July on, and she started that thing or this thing, like just going, that's it. I'm going plastic free. Who's with me. And it was 40 people month one, you know, like that was it. And then it was like, oh, maybe there's something here. And then, you know, 10 years later, it's an entire organization. It's a global movement. It's 250 million people who have participated in some way or another. You got businesses then kind of going, oh, we need to get in on this too. And it just kind of, it, it goes to show you that small fun projects can grow and can become movements. And what I love about what you've done with Trashy Selfie um, with the recycle emoji uh, <laughs> is you're putting the people back in it. I think for a long time, like so much of the imagery is here's this beach covered in trash and isn't this bad. But by putting ourselves back in it, it like one makes us kind of recognize that we're a part of the problem and two, the act of then picking it up and being a part of the solution as well. But in a fun way, it's just like, Hey, this is a track. Like we, we're taking tons of selfies. Why not do it to have a little bit more purpose, have a little bit more fun with it. Say like, Hey, this is kind of bad, but then, once you've put yourself in it, now you need to hold yourself to account to be like, all right, I should probably clean up my act a little bit. And we've got a photo for people who are watching. Um, but if you're not watching and you're listening, definitely check out this that we'll link to in the show notes. It's like one of page, technically not a selfie page. I have to <laughs> I have to call you on that. I, unless you're wearing a GoPro helmet or something. Um, but you know, it's you with your making a funny face and picking up trash on, on your beach. So, um, you know, just a good example of it. But I don't know, was that really intentional in the sort of like the selfie portion and that sort of vanity and trying to tap into that human feeling there in, yes, when you started it? It? <laughs> it, it? it was for sure. I mean, Sarah and I were like, you know, thinking of ways to um, not to spin it, but to share the message. And we started looking up some statistics and we we're like, it's one million selfies a minute or something like I can't even remember it was an just insane absurd. level of vanity <laughs> insane one million selfies are taken every minute or something around the world and we're like hey you know why not 
turn your selfie into a trashy selfie and and do something that's good for our planet and do your part and and to get kids thinking about um walking by a piece of trash you know from making sure that ends up where it's supposed to but also like going even further down the rabbit hole of like hey where did this plastic start where did it come from and then being able to recognize that when you're buying things too and you're at the store and purchasing food and making decisions based off of what you're packaging you know like I have such a hard time like I was telling Sean last night who picked out an apple that I got at Costco and um they have these organic apples at Costco now that come in a in a cardboard box and they're the best apples ever wow and which are hard to find on Maui I know this sounds funny but like good apples crunchy crisp beautiful apples and then the other day I was in there and the organic apples came in a plastic bag. And I was like, that is ridiculous. Like, why? <laughs> totally. Ugh, and it makes me so mad and it makes me not want to buy them. So it's, yeah, it's kind of a funny thing. But the more you become aware of it, it's everywhere. And so every decision you make every day, you know, anything you're purchasing it comes in plastic in some, you know, some facet. And not to say that, you know, I'm... I'm guilty. I'm not perfect. We all have to use plastic yeah. in our day-to-day lives. I mean, a lot of our products that a lot of things that I have in this room have been made from plastic, but I'm going to have them for an extremely long time. Yeah. You know, so understanding that we can't be perfect is like a huge thing because I feel like a lot of people kind of get to that point where they're like, well, you know, if I can't do it hundred percent, then why do I do it, do it at all? And I'm yeah. like, no, it's progress over perfection. That's kind of our saying with um, the trashy selfie project is doing the very best that you can and making the best decisions that you can, but also not like, you know, putting yourself down if you're buying something that came in a plastic wrapper, like, yeah. Yeah, we can we can sit around wringing our hands and getting tied up in knots thinking about the decisions that we need to make when we're trying to feed ourselves or feed our families, you know, um, and, and it's challenging, but we're all a part of the system. So it's like just understanding that nuance of you don't have to be perfect, try to be better, try to be better than better, try to be best. But like, you know, at some point, it's okay, you know, you're going to use plastic and recognizing how that plays out in our day to day, right? I mean, I know that I can bring a hydro with me and avoid a single use bottle. Okay, cool. I know that I can make my lunch when I back when we were going to offices, if offices ever exist again, but I can like make my lunch and bring it, you know, single use plastic free, but also thinking about, all right, what are the options when I'm going out to lunch? How do I avoid, you know, picking up something that comes in a plastic clamshell? You know, how do I avoid certain things like that? And once you start to do it, you start to see it everywhere and it becomes kind of a fun game. Um, I really like, I'm going to take a second while we're on it, because these are some of the points that Hydra is actually actively calling for, which is cool. I, I think with this Hydra refill for good campaign, um, you know, this was a positive thing that we could do, which was like, get a Hydro and here's how you are part of the solution is like get your Hydro, reuse it all the time. And I think it's great. But now Hydra is going a step further and like actively saying, okay, now that you're doing this, Make sure you also start to avoid some of these other forms of plastic, which I think is, is it's cool. It's cool to see a brand speak up and they've actively said, you know, like we were starting to speak up more about it. So I've got the for people watching the refill for good campaign up and there's kind of kind of like a double entendre with the refill for good campaign. I don't know how much are you up to speed on this and are, do you want to speak to it a little bit? Oh, for sure. I mean, it's pretty simple. <laughs> uh, they're encouraging you to reuse water bottles to get rid of the clamshell um to go containers um that's a huge thing in hawaii right now we're actually trying to ban well we actually banned styrofoam containers yeah it's um, awesome which is awesome but it took years for sure. and also get rid of using single-use straws and i think that's an easy one like no offense to whoever invented the straw but like <laughs> you don't need a straw that's an easy no, thank you. On to go stuff. And it's kind of tricky right now, too, right? With the COVID thing. Like, I went into a coffee shop yesterday. I had my mask on. I ordered a coffee. I brought my Hydro Flask cup with me. And they're like, we're really sorry, but we can't do it in to go container right now. And I'm like, oh, it made me so mad and so frustrated with the whole situation. But I also understand. Yeah. Um, it's a protocol. 
And but it also made me think like, okay, I guess I won't be getting to go coffees out anymore. You know, I didn't really know that that was a thing. So totally. yeah, this re- refill for good campaign is awesome. Um, they've incorporated a lot of amazing athletes and doctors here. You can see on the screen. <laughs> I mean, these are <laughs> um, so people like Cliff that are a is a fellow smarter. pure ambassador. <laughs> you know, people know his name, which is cool. He's a part of it. Super authentic. Like Cliff does not put his name on stuff that he doesn't feel good about, which is great. And then Sarah, um, we actually want to have uh, Dr. Royer on as well because she's done some really interesting research into the way plastic actually um, possibly emits greenhouse gases as it breaks down, which is like, duh, it's made from fossil fuels. So um, we want to get her on the show in the future too to share a little bit more about that. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a cool campaign. And, and again, so the the talking points for anyone listening um, or thinking about you know what can I do are one, make the switch to a reusable water bottle for hydro. Uh, to ditch the clamshell containers when you're going out, getting lunch, whatever it is. Here's a simple one. Grab a sandwich. Like sometimes it's like if you want to avoid things plastic, like grab a sandwich or, you know, have the thing that doesn't require as much plastic and then stand up against single use straws. And so I got to call it out. So Paige, you kind of said, I don't know who invented the straw. Have you ever done this homework on the straw? Like straws are actually were made of straw. Like that's where they, Originally? that's where straw comes from. Yes, like they were. See, made I didn't of... know that. You learn something new every day. <laughs> they were made of straw. I thought that it was should be made of, of straw. We far away from it. <laughs> um, there are now some brands trying to make, you know, uh, straw straws, um, which is hilarious. But um, yeah, cool. I'm stoked on the on the hydro campaign. Um, you know, like I said, people know that uh, I take my reusable everywhere. I'm stoked on the new stuff that they're doing. That's like lighter weight for travel, because I like this thing. Yeah. filled up Epic. in your bag is heavy um and when you're trying to like yeah. get through an airport and sprint to your next like flight when you're traveling internationally and don't want to miss a flight you're like oh bogged down but like for me this is so important especially in times of covid like you said going to a coffee shop because you now i know i can't i can't get a coffee out so my wife and i when we leave the house now to go do anything we're like do we have enough water okay did we like fill up the 64 ounce hydro and then do we have we bring our own coffee and we've got you know stasher bags for our snacks and stuff we kind of like go out fully kitted and that's been our approach during COVID-19 obviously not everybody can do that I get it and sometimes you got to grab something on the run but that's been our approach to the whole health thing and you know I think going back a couple episodes we had a, a friend Michael Doshi on who's big in the plastic movement and is all about keeping it fun and staying stoked. And he's like, look, this is a, a, um, a sliver of time in the bigger scheme and the bigger like picture, right? If we've got to use other materials right now because, or adopt other systems for health and safety, fine. There's a lot of evidence that that paper cup coming from the coffee shop is not much better than your reusable if it's been cleaned properly. We won't get into that debate right now, but yeah, the point is, is like, this subject. is a sliver of time <laughs> in like the bigger scheme of, you know, trying to get to better systems for, um, you know, a more sustainable planet. Speaking of I'm which, all about it. <laughs> I, I know you are, um, <laughs> speaking of which you also are, uh, are gardening a ton. Um, and I mean, I'm just jealous of like the fresh food that comes through your Insta of like, here's, here's wonderful things from the garden. Speaking of like ways that you can avoid plastic, like grow a garden, like grow your own vegetables and avoid all that stuff in the grocery store. Um, talk to me about this garden and like, what is, what is the plan here? And how soon is there going to be like a page arms CSA? <laughs> I mean, I've always loved gardening since I was a little kid. My mom had a raging garden and every house that I've lived in as an adult, I've had a little garden, but during this COVID thing and being locked down here, I've become a crazy plant lady. Like I'm not just like, I don't just have like a raging garden. Like I'm like, I've started all these new house plants and I'm, I don't know. I'm feeling a lot more connected to my green friends. <laughs> um, I'm really laughing yeah. about the crazy plant lady thing. I, I have to interject with the story cause it's too funny. And um, so my mom is a, is a great gardener. And she has a cyrus lily. Have you ever heard of a cyrus lily? No. Cyrus lilies are these incredible flowers that blossom for one night only. 
and they wow. have this incredible blossom and this amazing smell. So my whole childhood, this plant was like in the summertime became the central focal point of everything. And we were working hard in the restaurant business. Sometimes my parents would work late. She'd be like, when you get home, tell me if the flower is going to bloom. Cause you can start to see it like start to bulge as if it's going to do it for like a week. And then you're on like Cyrus Lily watch. Yeah. And so we just, my sister and I thought it was the funniest thing growing up. And then now my sister has one. And she's been growing this plant for six years. For six years, it sat dormant, no bloom, no blossoms, no blooming or whatever. And now finally it's blooming. And she like had her first blossom and was she's a writer. And so, of course, it has inspired like this first essay of the whole story of the Cyrus Lily blossom. It's so funny. That's like, so cool, though. Once it's you get into gardening things come... and your things start to blossom, you just feel like, oh, my God. It's amazing. I mean, it's like you're creating life. Like, I don't have kids. I've had a dog. Um, but my plants, like, I, I know it sounds ridiculous, but you have, a, we have a very special connection here with everything around us. I mean, that's why surfers love being in the ocean. Um, but on the other hand, like being connected with nature and growing what you eat is one of the most gratifying experiences I think any human can have. Like, did you see what I made for dinner last night? Oh my God. I made kabocha squash flowers that were stuffed with a cream cheese filling fried. What? They're like the best things ever. And a flower? It, uh, okay, hang on. You're taking a, a, a flower. squash flower. Squash blossom. Squash flower. A blossom, yeah. And then Stuffing cheese inside? It. Yeah, I had this um, pineapple habanero cream cheese. And then we added, what did we add? Parsley mint uh basil from the garden and some green onion all and then do you bread up, it or push, just like so mix all that mixture together stuff the flour and then i very lightly beer battered them wow are you gonna share the recipe with our listeners maybe i need to get ian walsh on us and just like make this crazy video on how to do this <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it it sounds like a great recipe but i mean you hit on an important note of like you know, producing locally, you're, you're both, you know, uh, eliminating the packaging, but you're also eliminating food miles. Like you are, you have the lowest carbon footprint food <laughs> basically yeah, growing I mean, in your backyard. My goal one day is to exclusively grow all of our vegetables. So you literally don't have to go to the store, but I mean, we eat a lot. So that being said, like I'm doing my best and there's certain things at this time of the year that grow better and that's kind of the magic of it, you know, like during the winter time, I never even water my garden ever, like ever. And it's summertime and it's really hot here and I'm on like twice a day watering duty. It's like, I feel like my whole life is <laughs> consumed by watering my garden. Um, but I'm also growing things that I've never grown before because usually this time of the year I'm gone. So our string beans our beans are raging like i've never really grown beans it's like a it's a summertime thing our squash are raging um are so are you I mean, are you about to announce that you're giving up the tour so you can become a gardener are you, <laughs> are you giving up big wave surfing is that what's coming <laughs> no not not yet but this is definitely uh an amazing um time to be at home and growing my own food and sharing it with friends is so amazing when you show up with a bundle of beans and a basket of tomatoes and here's you know like a handful of greens and it's so amazing to be able to share that with your friends it's I don't know I really love it and I, I'm a foodie so I really love eating like really good food and the best food that you can eat you grow like tomatoes have never been better I bet. I remember like, when we had ever. dinner in New York with your mom uh, when we were uh, working on uh, the announcement last year and, and you were like, we got to find a good place to eat. Like we hadn't eaten like all day because you went straight from you're on CNN, you know, announcing WSL's sustainability commitments. Then we took we, this like crazy adventure oyster to visit farm. Billion Oyster Project, <laughs> um, which is an incredible organization. And we were like, oh, we got to go check out this work and it's cool and let's shout them out. And then we were just starving. And so we tracked down some good sustainable uh, seafood. Um, that was a good one. But I love I love your your dedication to being a foodie and growing it yourself. Do you feel that you, through doing that, are influencing those around you as well? I, I feel like you like 
you have um, kind of a, a brand online as an athlete and a following. And so you use that to kind of promote what you're doing, but also, you know, locally, just with amongst your peers, it feels like you're influencing them as well. And you talk about those circles of influence. I just think it's great how you use your platform to promote this, this stuff. And in a time when um, it would be easy to just throw up selfies and butt shots and like call it a day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But like you actually, there's, there's purpose and meaning in, in the content that you're sharing. Yeah. I mean, I, I try to do my best and I, I hope that I'm inspiring other people to do it. You know, I feel like when I go on social media and I go to type in a friend's name on the search thing and garden posts pop up and I'm like, oh my God, look at this garden. I go down the rabbit hole and I get really inspired and. I mean, as an athlete, I understand, yes, I do have a platform to share things that, um, that I care about. And, but it, I feel like it's a very natural thing. If you're posting things that you are doing or that you feel passionate about, that you like, it's pretty real. And I mean, anyone that follows my Instagram stories, it's food and my garden, um, pretty much exclusively. <laughs> um, so totally. hopefully my viewers don't mind that because I'm growing some insane watermelon right now. Like it's been fun to share the whole process. <laughs> I have a 25 pound watermelon. It's this big. It's huge. That's insane. Um, but, but yeah, I ho I'm hoping that people get inspired because, you know, growing a garden, I know that it takes a little bit of work to set up. Um, but essentially it's very easy. If you have good soil and you're watering your garden, plants are going to grow and they're going to thrive if you talk to them. So, yeah, get out there and build your own garden. I, I love Lucas Nelson's song. Um, it's one of Sean and I's favorite song, you know, especially now with everything going on. But it's turn off the news and build a garden. And it's so true. Get out there and just be present and be with nature. And it feels amazing. It all, you know, it's... It, I, uh, I love that and I share that and I have to shout out my wife, Annie, who um, we used to live in Rockaway Beach and we were in like a town, little townhouse apartment, like one floor of a townhouse place and we didn't have any actual soil, right? Like not everybody has access to soil um, within their own home or whatever, or even in their neighborhood. But she turned this little plot that was like outside our door that was really just like mulched and was meant to be for like a garden gnome. And, you know, like, <laughs> like that was it. And she turned this, I, I don't know, maybe it was two, two feet by, you know, three feet or maybe four feet spot. And Rockaway has the sandiest kind of dirtiest soil after Hurricane Sandy. And she turned that into this wonderful little garden with some herbs and tomatoes. And that thing just took and it blossomed and it grew. And it was so impressive. And it was such a cool thing that we had that. And like life will find a way and grow. And I think so to, to kind of echo what you're saying, if you have access to a piece of land, like farm that. But if you don't try to find a community garden, too, because that then you know that's what she eventually did is she found a little plot inside of a community garden now you're not only connected to the land but you're connected to your community and that's how people really come together you know who maybe have very different backgrounds and now all of a sudden you're building this community and that community stronger and brings in that diversity that is so important now more than ever like we we uh you know going back to the social media this is like becoming a whole critique of social media and selfies but you know we're so split into our little worlds on our phones and the content that we follow and then we get further down like you are currently only getting watermelons probably like getting like japanese square watermelons too i'm sure you're getting some of that content sent your way but you get for you get put into this filter bubble and then you aren't connecting to your neighbor or to other people around you and so now more than ever as we're all kind of shut in at home and not flying around the world trying to do whatever we're doing it's like no, no no let's stay in our local area and connect more with our community so i think it's i think it's awesome that you're doing it and um i, li I like the content keep it up uh <laughs> <laughs> but yeah just to touch quickly on that like if you can't can't find a community garden because i know that here on maui there are only a few um i know that they're becoming more popular but um, supporting your local farmers markets. I mean, that's a huge way to connect sure. with your community. A, you're eliminating a lot of plastic, just, you know, going and buying heads of lettuce and radishes or whatever it may be. 
Hopefully that's not wrapped in plastic or politely decline it. No, I don't need a bag. I can put it in my basket that I brought. Um, but you are connecting with your community and also from where that food comes from. You can talk to the farmer directly or the farmer's daughter that's selling it at the market and hear the story of it. And it's, it's really beautiful. And it is a really amazing way to connect with your community uh, through food. Yeah, for sure. Um, speaking of community, we have reached out to uh, the WSL Pure community and we've said, send us your best tips for going plastic free. And I actually, when I kicked it off, I jokingly was like, don't just tell me you've switched to a hydro flask, which like, sorry, hydro. <laughs> um, I was like, that's easy. Uh, <laughs> Maybe because I have a bunch of them, right? But I was like, you know, don't just, you know, we know how to skip a bottle. Give us your best tips. So we've had some some people in the plastic, you know, kind of pollution space send us in tips that we're um, dropping in voice memos at the end of the episodes. So I wanted to grab you while we have you here. What is your best tip, especially for you traveling around the world? And we're so we're going to assume that you have like a kit of hydros that you take with you when you're flying. Like I, I always bring like my 32 cause like this long, this bigger one gets me across an international flight pretty good. You know, like it's, it's enough. And then I bring my like coffee cup and I use that and that's how I can avoid, you know, plastic on planes. But I'm curious if you have like a good, like creative tip, you know, one of them so far was, um, in times of COVID just refuse the plastic bags that they're giving you at grocery stores and put everything back in your cart and take the whole cart out to your car. Like it's not that hard and just have your reusables in your car. So um, mine is that sometimes we get stuff dry cleaned and when we go to the dry cleaner, we have asked them not to put stuff in the plastic wrap when they give it back to us. And now they know they have our like little account marked. We go and we're in touch with our community. And so we never get that plastic sheathing over our dry cleaning. And that's like, that's awesome. doesn't seem like a huge win, but it feels like this amazing little victory every time we pick up our stuff and there's no extra plastic on it. We're like, yes. So epic. What do you got? Yeah. I mean, (laughs) I'm putting you on the spot here. Give us a good one. It's a tough one because I do all the things that you've mentioned. I mean, I travel with my 40 ounce hydro flask. Oh, you go 40. Okay. Yeah. I need four. I drink a lot of water. Yeah. Um, my coffee mug, I have a utensil kit that I carry in my backpack, but since we're not traveling and just talking about like stuff that you can do at home, I mean, things have become a little bit trickier for sure with the COVID situation. Um, I really like the not using, I mean, here on Maui, plastic bags are banned. They have been for years. So That's great. Um, you have to bring your own bag into the grocery store. But my like personal favorite, and I'm sure people have seen me in Mana Foods, where if you're going in just for like specific, like a few things and you forget your bag, there's two options. A, you can fill your shirt up and carry as much crap you know as you can in your arms and my thing is if you can carry it to the counter like that you can carry it out of the store um but i i force myself to purchase a reusable bag and so i have i'm guilty of having like a stack of those but it's very easy when you're walking into a grocery store and you see that someone doesn't have one you bring two and you're like hey here's a bag so it's like a gift that keeps on giving i like Um, that I think that's a, that's a good one. But I mean, there's so many tips. It's just becoming more aware of, of what, you know, what you're doing. Um, Not buying any, like choosing the juice or the iced tea or the kombucha um, that comes in a can or in a glass bottle instead of the one that's in the plastic bottle. Maybe it's not the flavor that you want, but you'll survive and just making little decisions like that. You will survive. I mean, it's endless. I can go down the rabbit hole. Um, there's so many little tips, but um, finding the ones that are that are easy and then they become second nature. Like you don't even think about it. You're not, you yeah. know, um, no, I do not need a straw. If you've already been given something with a plastic lid on it, you do not need a straw. <laughs> um, I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> all right. Final question. Um, cause I want to be respectful of your time. Um, I know you've got a, a, a lake to go, um, to go not serve. <laughs> um, we always ask this question. This one came from Ace Buckin. Uh, so it is meant to inspire change or if you were you know, trying to inspire change, if you could take one person surfing in the world, one person in the world, anybody, who would you take with you? Where would you go? And what would you talk about with the Jeez. lens of inspiring change? 
I mean, that's a lot of pressure for a podcast right now. I have to, like, come up with that, like, on the spot, <laughs> right this second. Oh. I'll stall for you by, um, I don't know, maybe showing some more uh, cool, fun things that Hydra is doing for their <laughs> Refill for Good campaign. But come on, you got it. Oh, uh, there's so many things. I I feel like after this, I'm going to be like, wait, can we do <laughs> something else? Send me a voice else? memo. You can send me you know a voice be, memo to add. You it. know what would be really fun? Um, and not to get political, but just as like a funny, let's think of this as a meme. <laughs> Let's just drop our president on the inside of a 60-foot wave at Jaws. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I guess we could talk about climate change on the way back out on the jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> you, you went, why am I not surprised that you of all people, the big wave charger, the person who I said, you know, pulls no punches, was like, I'm going to go right. For, and even says, like, not to get political, but let me just go here. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I mean, I could, I could, Um, you know, there's so many people that I would love to speak to, but just throwing it out there, just like as something kind of light and funny. And I think that would, that would be a good one, you know, take (laughs) someone surfing that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We'll um, leave it at that. (laughs) I like it. I love it. I love it. I'm sure there are a lot of people who share that with you. Um, you know, uh, I think having him try to understand better the connection that the ocean has to, you know, our human health and, um, you know, the communities that around the world depend on it, which is really everybody. Um, so, you know, I do think there is something, something there, um, and having him better understand the, the, the damage that's being done through a lot of the changes in policy environmentally, you know, you can, if you, if you don't look at anything else, um, unequivocally, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of work being done to, um, you know, open up the environment to harm. And that's really unfortunate. So, um, that was a fun one page. I'm not surprised at all. That was amazing. Um, okay. Anything else you want to share, uh, that's on your mind? Um, I feel like we covered a lot of ground, but, um, uh, anything else on your mind that you want to share with everybody? Yeah, I think we touched a lot of things that are near and dear. Um, yeah, it was good talking with you, Reese. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, we love Trashy Selfie. We're going to go do some Trashy Selfies. <laughs> so the, it's a Trashy Selfie challenge with a recycle emoji. So there's two. So hashtag Trashy Selfie with the recycle emoji. And then if we're doing a challenge and you're trying to enter it, it's trashy selfie challenge. Just straight. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. cool. Good to know. Um, yeah. Thanks again for coming on the show page. Appreciate it. All right. Talk to you soon, Reese. We love seeing our partners level up their environmental initiatives. So thanks again to Hydroflask for supporting the podcast and check out their refill for good campaign. It's hashtag refill for good. Remember, Get yourself a good reusable bottle, ditch the plastic clamshell containers on your to-go lunch, and stand up against single-use straws. It's not that hard, and I believe in you. You've got this. You can find out more at hydroflask.com or check them out on social at hydroflask. Um, The next time you're at the beach, you might want to take a selfie, but make it a trashy selfie. Um, Join the Trashy Selfie Challenge and put a little purpose into into your selfies. Thanks to Paige for sharing the campaign. And, um, you know, it's a safe way to engage in the plastic pollution battle while we can't have, you know, big group cleanups and whatnot. Um, Thanks to Paige for joining us. Thanks for all of her work for the environment. There are going to be links to Paige herself and to her projects in the show notes. Check those out. Be sure to stick around at the end for a good tip from our friend Michael Doshi. Uh, This tip is uh, a good one. Um, If you have a good tip for us on how you go plastic free or how people can, you know, go further down their journey to be plastic free, uh, please send it to us in a voice memo. Uh, Email it to us at oneocean at wcellpure.org and we'll feature it in one of our upcoming shows. And as always, thank you for listening. Thanks for following along on social. You can find us at wcellpure or at wcellpure.org online. Um, Appreciate the ratings and reviews and appreciate everyone just uh, sticking with it through everything. Um, Until next week, stay safe, stay healthy, refill for good, take a trashy selfie, and keep putting one foot in front of the other out there. All right, here's our pal Doshi with an epic tip for Plastic Free July.
Hey everyone, this is Doshi, the gnarly beach cleaner, calling in from Mar Vista in Los Angeles. My best tip for putting an end to plastic pollution is watch the new full-length documentary, The Story of Plastic. It will help you seek the truth and better understand the systemic injustices we are trying to solve through ending plastic pollution. Whatever part of the solution you're working on, remember to always make it fun and to stay stoked, my friends. You.